Hey guys, Oscar G here with OG Construction Project Manager. If you guys remember from last week, we were talking about safety and safety can't really take a day off, although we're taking it kind of casual today for the safety fails that we're going to take a look at in just a couple minutes. Now, there's two things that I forgot to give to you from the last video and it how it pertains to safety. Now, as many of you know, a lot of companies do require you, even as a tradesman, I mean, especially as a tradesman, that you need to have a certification from OSHA. There's a 10 hour certification and there's a 30 hour certification. But what are these certifications about? Well, it's OSHA, it's safety. Safety using the tools that are, you're gonna be around, the ones that you're gonna be using, and you know, all kinds of other um, uh, fall protection safety, uh, trench safety, things like that. Now, they're gonna be in the description below. So there's the OSHA website and also there's a link to a company that can help you with your OSHA certification. Um, you should probably find out not only what the minimum requirement is for your employer, but also if you really do need that 30 hour uh, OSHA class, they might even pay for it to send you to get that training. So make sure you check with them. Now, we're going to take a look at some picks that I scoured the internet and I found you know, obviously there's tons and tons of safety fails. Here's some of the more memorable ones that I thought because I can kind of associate with those a little more. And especially, you know, out on the field, uh, this is some of these things are just kind of like, you know, uh, really guys, really, this is what you guys are doing out there. So I hope you enjoy it and stay till the end of the, the all the pictures because I'm also going to show you a clip where the safety fails just come straight out of left field. I mean, when I first watched it, I completely wasn't expecting it. I was looking at the center of that frame and, you know, it just, like I said, came right out of left field. So without further ado, let's get to the pictures. Okay guys, here's our first picture. As you can see, there's an emergency exit, but what's in front of the emergency exit, it sure as hell isn't clear space. You can see all of those things that are in front of it. In an emergency, you're supposed to have clear access to that emergency exit, not only on this side, but also on the outside so that you have room or the group of people that use the exit have room to exit the building and get far enough away from it to a safe spot or a place where they're supposed to convene, depending on, as here, it looks like a big box warehouse store or also like when you come out of an office building, things like that, out in the parking lot, a little grassy area, things like that. And obviously as PMs or even PEs, we know that the fire code requires this. So this is actually not only up to the employees, but also either the supervisors or the managers, whoever it may be, should keep an eye on this. And some of these places actually have a safety officer that's supposed to be patrolling the area to spot things like this and make sure that everyone knows that this is not okay. So here we have our first safety fail. Now let's see the next one. All right, as you can see here, there's multiple issues. First of all, the most obvious one is the bucket on the head. Uh, that does not count as eye protection and he probably also needs ear protection as uh, the a lot of us know that when you put your head inside of a semi-enclosed object such as this small clearish bucket uh, there's reverberation from the sounds on the outside especially when you're doing something like this you know cutting the concrete with a grinder in this manner and the other issue is if you take a look at his, um, I guess his hoodie, his sweatshirt, he's got the two strings hanging out. And of course those can get caught uh, on the wheel. Hopefully he's not having to bring that grinder as or that close to himself. But nevertheless, those should not be hanging out like that. You know, wear a different sweater, wear a jacket. Um, his gloves, eh. You know, not necessarily needs to wear gloves. If I mean, if that's part of the PPE that's supposed to be going on on the job site, I'll leave that one up to the superintendent or the general contractor, whoever's in charge out there, or the construction manager for that matter. And then taking a look at his feet. 
you can see those are like the old school Converse type of shoes that he's wearing and that is completely not appropriate for a job site whether you're doing exterior work or interior work you know like a remodel or a ti that just isn't uh, acceptable as part of the ppe so once again we have a safety fail and hopefully he doesn't hurt himself and he never did on this project now uh, let's see the next one and as you can see here We've got a ladder, a very tall ladder because we have very tall ceilings in this home and someone's changing a light or finishing up the finish trim or something. But the point is he's misusing this ladder. First of all, obviously by having it propped up on top of buckets, you know, um, you just need to make sure that you have the right equipment. In this case, there probably should have been a scaffold built because I don't think that's going to be the only light that they have in that uh, living area and that living space there. Um, but regardless of whether it's propped up on the buckets or not, we should also pay attention that he's standing on the very top of the ladder, which the instructions and the safety precautions clearly state that that is not a step and it should never be used as a step. It's the most narrow part of the ladder any wiggling in any direction one can easily easily lose their balance and that ladder will fall to the side and completely completely unsafe move here complete safety fail let's see what we got coming up next ah yes another case of man versus nature i guarantee you that under certain circumstances nature will win 100 percent of the time now, in this case, it looked like there was probably snow and and or ice already down when they were installing this scaffolding. Hopefully no one was on it when this happened. But as you can see in towards the back on the left of this uh, photo here, that the support just gave out. Well, I didn't give out, but it slid out from underneath and, you know, caused the uh, scaffold to go down on that side. Now something like this can be easily avoided by you know tying the bottoms and the tops you know maybe even in the center tying it to the building so it doesn't slide out that way um and you can as a matter of fact also maybe have like a uh not a gusset plate but uh a brace maybe two braces one on each side of the um of that vertical support so that it doesn't want to slide you know side to side parallel to the scaffolding uh, because if you already have it tied to the building you know it's not going to go hmm, well depending on how you fasten it to the building what you use you know whether it goes in or out you know towards the building or away from the building but the point is when you're doing things like that or like this i should say that safety should always be exercised i mean in all cases you should be exercising safety all of the time that's the main point but there are certain steps that you can take to mitigate things going wrong like this, okay? As we can see, this is a safety fail any way you slice it. Speaking of slicing things, um, as you can see here, we've got a grinder, uh, an angle grinder with a cutting wheel. And do you notice anything about the grinder? That's right, there's no guard on it. A guard may have prevented at least some of this damage. Of course, he was cutting something, whether it was the concrete, which I doubted with that size cutting wheel. Um, he was cutting something and he had to hold that something with his foot. And so he ended up, as you can see, going through his shoe, which on a job site or when it actually, even if you're at home working on something, cutting it, because I know some of us do, we have that mechanical inclination and we use a grinder and in this case with the cutting wheel he completely went through his shoe uh me personally even when i'm working on something at home i put my boots on uh i'm not saying that the boots would have completely helped um to for or for this not to happen you know not to slice into it but at least you're wearing boots and it gives you a little bit more protection a little bit more resistance for you know the um wheel not to go in as quickly so this guy is very lucky I, since I don't see any blood. He's very lucky. I don't think it went as deep as, you know, to actually cut him, you know, cut his heel. But like I said, you know, it really should be that he should be wearing 
boots instead of shoes. Complete safety fail. I'm wondering if he was wearing shorts or pants. I don't know if he has that uh, pant leg pulled up or not. But regardless, he needs to exercise a lot more safety precautions because here there is a lack thereof. Now, this one I have not personally seen out on the field. But as you can see, this is extremely dangerous. When you're I think seeing, I believe OSHA says that if you're going to be more than 48 inches above the ground, that you will actually need to be tied off. Now, when you tie it off, you need to um, be tied off to something solid that is, I guess, um, you know, once it's installed, it's in place and it's not going to wiggle, it's not going to move. You know, that's why we, it needs to be tied down pretty solid. And those harnesses are really only made to, you know, carry the weight of one person. And in this case, if the guy on the left were to somehow, you know, get up on that parapet wall and slip and fall, he's going to pull that guy on the right with him, obviously. So, I mean, like I said, those harnesses were really designed to hold the weight of one person. But if the guy on the right were also on the parapet, he'd be pulled down and now his harness has to carry his own weight plus that of the other guy. And it's completely, completely 100% dangerous. This is kind of something that you have to take seriously. I don't know if it warrants termination, but definitely, definitely a talking to maybe even, you know, go home for the day or the rest of the week, but not to completely terminate them. Uh, this is a safety fail that is, is, is just wrong. It shouldn't happen. You know, these guys, um, even if they had the OSHA 10 or the OSHA 30, you can give someone all the training, but if they don't exercise the safe practices and, you know, that they learned in the training, then there's nothing anyone can do except for terminate them, especially if this isn't their first offense. So here we have a safety fail. Now this picture here, you can see there's a person up standing on the bucket while the bucket's in the air. And I'm guessing that's, I don't know, anywhere from 25 to 30 feet in the air. And obviously that person cannot tie off to anything uh, to stay safe in the event that that person slips off of the bucket. Now, if you take a look straight down of where they're at, there's a lot of stuff on the ground. I guarantee you they're not gonna fall flat on the ground. They're gonna hit something and ser seriously injure themselves or even kill themselves. And that, like I tell my guys, is just not worth the risk. You should never ever be risking your life for the project. If something seems unsafe, if you need another piece of equipment in order to finish what you were doing, then you need to let management know, let supervision know, hey, I can't get this done, I can't get that done because you know we don't have the right piece of equipment. And of course, as a project manager, I would say, okay, what do we need? What would benefit you the most and get that done as quickly and as best as possible? You have to be efficient and you have to be effective with these decisions. And something like this is just so extremely dangerous that, to be honest, that person that is standing on the bucket will not return to work. They will be immediately let go and not return to work. Now, as far as the operator, he's supposed to know better. He or she is supposed to know better. Uh, it's in the training, and I'm pretty sure it's actually on the safety precautions that are always you know, those labels that stuck to the interior of the excavators. So I'm sorry, but for me, this is on the spot, immediate go home, you know, a termination, not just go home and come back in a couple of days or next week. This is go home. You're done. You're not working here anymore. Uh, this is an extreme case of a safety fail. Now this one, I, I guess in a way, I, it's almost comical, but you know, you can't take safety for granted. This guy here, whoop. Okay, so as you can see, this guy here, he's up on the ladder. And as a matter of fact, I mean, it's almost comical that this guy would think that he's safe tying off to the ladder that he's actually standing on as it is not um, immovable. It's not something that's tied down and isn't going to move if he slips and falls. Of course, if he slips and falls, his momentum carrying him down will create a greater force than just his weight. So that person on the left there that's like 
pretty much stepping on the bottom of the ladder to hold it in place, it's probably going to get hurt. Not only that, the guy falling, he won't just get hurt because of the fall. If you were falling just onto a, you know, flat surface, if you look in the glass, after the uh, mullion, just under the mullion there, you see that the reflection shows there's stairs under him. He's going to get even more hurt, cause larger injuries because of that. And as a matter of fact, that guy on the left is probably also going to get hurt when that, um, you know, the ladder kind of pretty much teeter totters up. And one of two things, it can hurt his leg really bad or it can actually shoot him up into the ceiling. He'll hit up there and then land on the ground. Major safety fail. This one should never happen. And now here we are. This is obviously in a shop. And like we discussed uh, in the last video, one has to be vigilant about safety. Not only in the office, not only in the field, but also in the warehouse or the shop, as the case is here. Of course, he's using a grinder. Not sure how big the grinder really is, but you see all the sparks flying and hitting the tank of the torch. Now, I don't know if this is an oxyacetylene setup or not, but the point is when you're grinding, you really should be watching where your sparks are going because you don't have to just watch out about a fire, you know, when you're burning plastic or paper, if the sparks are going that way, but you also be careful with this. You can make that um, cylinder extremely, extremely hot. And, you know, because those sparks, they're orange for a reason. They're hot. Now, the other thing is, it's not just the tank. It's also about the hoses. Where are the hoses placed? I mean, like we said at the beginning, it doesn't matter. This cart just flat out needs to be moved. But if we really want to pick it apart, we need to take a look to see where this guy actually has his hoses because those hoses are not fire resistant. They're, uh, they're not really fireproof by any means. The oxyacetylene or actually the cylinders there, the bottles that have the gas in them, they're made out of steel or metal and they're pretty thick. You know, they resist a lot of pressure and maybe a slight temperature rise won't do them so much harm. But you really, really have to be careful with those hoses because since it's like a rubber material, you can easily burn through those very, very easily, and especially have the gas still on and you start burning through the uh, burning through the hose. You could actually potentially be setting those things on fire, um, you know, because they're not they're not safe like the cylinders are from heat and excessive heat can cause very, very bad things. So this is in the shop, a safety fail. Now here we have another ladder. You got two guys, one's on the ladder and the other guy's under the, pretty much holding the other bottom end of the ladder. They're on a set of stairs. And who's to say the guy on the bottom, you know, he doesn't start getting tired and the ladder slips, he drops his ladder. What if he starts getting sweaty palms? and the ladder actually slips out from his hands. It's going to have very bad consequences. I guarantee you there's not enough time for him to run to get out of the way. Once that ladder starts, ladder starts to go, the other guy's going to fall over and then maybe it'll close, maybe not. I don't know, but there will be significant damage, not only to the, let's see, kind of like the handrail and anything else that's around it, but they will also hurt themselves by landing you know on top of the other person or you know just falling down the stairs there's just no way around it this is a major safety fail okay this one i've seen i have personally seen this on a little bit bigger scale they had there was a perry ellis or a perry scaffold just like this okay but there were two levels to it and then on top of that, they had a ladder, but it's not like this because this looks like about a six foot ladder. No, 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 no. They had like a 14, a 16 foot ladder, a frame just like this opened up and it was three electricians. One was at the top of the ladder and he was doing the work that needed to be done while the other two stood on the scaffold holding the ladder so it didn't fall over because obviously with that um, height, 
you have to have a larger base for your ladder. And in doing so, it's not going to fit on a scaffold like this. So those are the two guys were literally holding the, um, the ladder to keep it from tipping over. And this is actually one of my jobs. And I, as soon as I came in and I saw it, you know, immediately I took him down and I, I gave him a stern talking to that safety is the number one priority. Everybody goes home the way they got here in one piece. And I didn't want to send anyone to the hospital, which is actually kind of ironic because it was hospital work. We were at the hospital, um, not inside the hospital, but one of the um, supporting the supporting buildings surrounding the hospital. <laughs> and I told them, "You, I don't want you guys to have to end up in the hospital here that we're at. So this is a major safety fail. And this was borderline unexcusable, um, at least for myself, because... I can kind of understand that, you know, we want to finish this, but at the same time, is it worth it to risk getting up there when you can make a phone call and get a piece of equipment there the very next day to help you get up there and, you know, change the light or do, you know, pull wires through a junction box, make a connection in a junction, whatever. The point is you need to work safely, safely. You can be, you can still be efficient and effective, but work safely so that you can come, so you can live and come work another day. Okay. So once again, here we have a safety fail. Let's see. Oh, and here we have the ladder propped up against the wall so that we can climb it and do something above it. But of course there's the open stairwell underneath it. So the floor is cut out. If you fall, of course, you're not going to land on that immediate floor that's there. You're going to fall through the opening, land on the stairs, and potentially hurting yourself even further than you would have in the first place. So, very important. You need to use the ladders as they were intended to be used. They were designed in such a way for a purpose. Not just because they looked cool, not just because eh, it kind of works. No, this is exactly, or not this, but... They were you they were designed to be used a certain way and that's the way you should always use them you always have to think that you need to take care of your own safety as well as those around you so you always have to be vigilant let's see what's the next one here oh okay so this one you can see they actually have the wrong equipment for this job uh clearly they should have brought in uh, a piece of equipment that has the boom arm with the man basket at the end of course they have the man basket here but that is not or yeah the boom arm that it telescopes so that they can reach because if you look down by the wheels you can see those are actually bollards so that you can't have a vehicle or a piece of equipment like this go over there and onto the surface that they're working above now the guy, I just don't know what's going, you know, what would go through my head if they told me that I need to climb that ladder to get up to where I'm going, being that one of the ladders in the basket that technically is semi unstable because it's still kind of, you know, if you bounce in it, it still rocks. But then the other end, you put it on, it's leaning on the, um, oh, what do you call it? It's leaning on the fire sprinkler pipes. Those things are made to hold that kind of weight not only that they're not really made so that they stop from swinging back and forth when you have that that kind of force on it this is something where the whoever came to scope out or give the bid really messed up you know so and i'm sure these two guys are on this project or on this repair all by themselves there's no support staff there's no superintendent because they're done this is more of a repair job than anything and it is very unfortunate um i really hope that that guy, you know, went back up or went up and made it back down perfectly fine. I really do. Cause I, I really hate to see people, you know, get hurt when they didn't need to push themselves or push the boundaries to, to where they did because they're going to get hurt. And like I said, I want to get you home the same way you showed up. You need to work. You need to put food on the table for your family. It's not about you got hurt. You need to take a look at when you get hurt, who else does it affect? As a company, I could care less. I could really care less. It's just money. A limb, you know, some fingers, a limb, an eye, that, that is unacceptable. 
No, I can understand if you get maybe some scrapes that cut here and there, but nothing major. No, 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 no. You need to keep providing for your family and, you know, the company needs to keep on keeping on because if someone gets seriously injured on a project, as you probably already very uh, know very well, that OSHA will show up on a serious injury on the job site and they will shut you down while they investigate. No work by any trades, no matter what trade you were. You could be the fire sprinkler guy. You could be the electrician. You could be the structural steel guy at the beginning of the project. But as soon as someone gets hurt pretty bad or to a certain degree, OSHA will come out, take a look around, and at the first little sign that something isn't safe, they shut you down. And they'll claim it's for the investigation, which it really is, but maybe not into the original reason why they were there. But they will, they will investigate and try to come up with a ruling. So let's go to the next one. Now, here you can see there's a scaffold right to this guy's right. And there's the railing and there's someone standing over there. Uh, between two people, you can't, you, you can't tell me that none of them thought, well, this is unsafe. We should wait. We should brainstorm and see, ask the superintendent for some type of support. Whether it's, you know, putting another plank there, which he can stand on anyways and not be in this precarious predicament. Um, it's just, it, it just baffles me, these guys. I'm like, it's kind of like, what the hell are you thinking, you know? This is something, you know, very small that we can get done very quickly, and let's just go get the piece of equipment, or wait for the piece of equipment, however you're running your job. And uh, it's just very disconcerting to see people take these risks, these unnecessary risks that they just shouldn't be taking. This is a safety fail on, on, on multiple levels. Uh, let's go to the next one. Okay, so here we got a double hitter. This one, as you can see, they're grocery stores. They're both, well, it looks like the one on the left, I would imagine, is a grocery store. And the one on the right is one of those uh, bigger brand uh, uh, stores. Almost like, mm, no, not really like a warehouse store, but you know what I'm talking about. That um, store that kind of starts with a W. Yeah. So anyways... <laughs> let's take a look here the guy on the left the guy on the left he's on that little four foot ladder and he's once again standing on the very top of the ladder which the instructions clearly tell you not to stand up there but only that he's standing with his feet parallel to it so any little movement any little wiggle uh, if he misplaces his weight you know rocks his weight forward or backward that thing can just give out and he'll be fast he'll be on the floor so fast it's not even funny now, if we take a look at the guys on the right, now they actually have almost like a um, like a catwalk that they were able to build to get up on over the freezer or the refrigerator for the fruit and the vegetables. Now, if you take a look here, their scaffold part, the edge, the edge on the right, actually is on the refrigerator unit, and that part up there just is not made to support that much extra weight. So this is a complete safety fail. It's kind of like a half-hearted try at what they were supposed to get done, you know, safety-wise. So let's go on to the next one. Now, <laughs> this one, I, mean, I don't know. It's just ironic. They could have easily got a small enough... Um, well, actually, it looks like a warehouse. It looks like, honestly, they're in a warehouse, and that's a mezzanine that he's attaching that to. But um, if you look underneath where it says, first, we have a... Can anyone see that? A scissor lift. Yes. But the scissor lift can't be used on the side that the guy is trying to fasten the sign to. Why? Because no one thought that the mezzanine does go over the stair railing. And therefore, he can't use the um, scissor lift to get up there. So what does he do? He's got one foot on the outside rail of the stairs that are right next to where he's working. And he puts the other foot on and it looks like a filing cabinet. You know? But of course, as we all know, you can make yourself, you know, a little taller just standing straight. But <clears throat> in any case, with this thing, uh, I don't it, It's just like they're just ignorant or actually oblivious to the sign. Think safety first. Take a day, take two days. I just don't see this sign being imperative that you guys make sales or that it's um, related to, you know, everyone's. Uh, you know, working there. 
I mean, it's related to everyone's well-being, right? Think safety first. And that's very true. You really should be thinking safety first to make sure that all your employees are happy and good. And, you know, as long as they're not hurt, then they can continue working just like they always have been. So, guys, major safety fail. And please, please, please don't ever stand on the rail of a set of stairs, whether it be wrought iron or even like this, a little bit thicker, maybe a pipe here. But um, anyways, the point is, just don't take these unnecessary risks. You know, it's better for you. It's better for the company. It's better for everyone all around. Let's see here. Now, what we've got next is this guy here. Obviously, he's got the scissor lift. Now, I don't know why he can't, you know, make the scissor lift go up. That he has to stand on the railing of the same scissor lift. And if you can see here, uh, he's doing something. Can't quite tell because he's in the way. But he's working on, looks like the back of a dump truck or of a carrier of some type. No, it is a dump truck. I can see if you look down by the center um, support, the center, the center crossbar of the scissor lift, you can see there's actually the chute that, uh, where the material comes out, whatever it may be. Now, this guy... I would imagine that from the floor up to the top where he's actually working is probably about 12 feet or so. Anywhere between 10 and 12 feet. I'm pretty sure it's 12. I just don't see how much of a hurry he could be in. Why didn't he go get a ladder, a taller ladder, six foot ladder, an eight foot ladder? It would be probably easier. You know, you don't have to worry about your balance if you just kind of spread your legs a little bit wider on the step there. But this is a complete safety fail. You know, one wrong step and he's going to end up on the floor. It's just not not a great thing. All right. Let's see one more. Do we have? Yes. Okay. This guy obviously has no idea or maybe doesn't have no idea, but he just doesn't care. He's tied off to a piece of red, um, pretty much stay out, red danger tape. That's what it is. And for what? I don't even know. I mean, obviously we can't see what he's doing, but if you look and in him in relation to those stairs he's at about the third floor and there's no parapet wall to help you know if he were to kind of stumble towards the edge i mean this is a safety fail on multiple levels you know this guy just doesn't seem like he values his life very much you know uh, because of the fact that there really isn't anything down yet they could have easily either nailed down or screwed down some uh hook points so that you know him and who anybody else that's up there can actually hook themselves to to have their fall protection system actually work the way it's supposed to so something like this uh, on the first what is it um on the very first uh offense i would write him up give him a verbal warning but we'll write him up on the second one that's it you're gone terminated goodbye you know it's just something that one shouldn't have to tolerate you know, I, as a PM, as a PE, superintendent, anyone, like we say, safety is everyone's responsibility. Now here, I can't remember if this is the last picture, but once again, here we have a ladder. Ladder's being used actually fine the way it's supposed to be. He's not at the very top. He's not on the second to last rung up there, but he has the bottom of the ladder, one on a cart and the other side on the trash can of given the trash can has wheels so any wrong shift can sh make that um uh that trash can just go flying out from under him but of course same thing with the cart you know he could be taking them somewhere leading forward and then with the um, trash can following behind you never know this is something where it just seems like they could have said you know what i don't really feel comfortable doing this and so what we need to do is get some um get a piece of equipment so i can get up there we'll clear out all the stuff on the bottom and we'll get a piece of equipment even if it's just a scissor lift and you know we can get up there and do that work this is a complete safety fail because as high as he is not only that but he doesn't have any fall protection i know mean, you guys are going to say well there's nowhere to hook onto well that's kind of irrelevant because the general contractors carry that stuff around where they can make anchor points they can do different things in order to facilitate the use of fall protection 
Okay. All right. And let's see what's the next thing that we've got here. Now, here's the clip that I mentioned to you at the beginning of this video. Okay. You're going to want to watch this completely out of left field, the safety fail that's going to happen. Okay. Of course, when I was watching this, my main focus was the guy cutting the ridge beam, but I'll leave it up to you. All right, guys, that's the end of all the pictures and that one clip that I promised at the end. So for next time, what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at a project that's going on down the street from me. It's the widening of the 405 freeway here in Southern California. I'm going to try to get pictures, uh, see if I can get what the estimated amount was. And guaranteed, that's not the price they're paying now. I'm sure there's been plenty of change orders. Uh, the baseline schedule or actually the due date, which I know has been pushed out because they told Davis is going to be a certain amount of time and they're obviously past that already. So, um, and any other tidbits of information or facts that I can get out of that project. So for now, we'll leave it at that. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date on whenever we release new videos, which hopefully is going to be once a week that's what i'm shooting for but anyways other than that we'll see you next time and remember everyone especially when you're out on the field stay safe